In this video, I want to show you step by step how to create this hero area in DV5. So this is going to be our final design. I know it doesn't look exactly the same. We're only using this for inspiration purposes, but we are going to be using the latest features in DV5 which is Flexbox. And also you get to see how this page gets to be put together. I will also be using our DV5 framework, Sidecrafter Pro. So you can, at least you can see the process of getting all this together. All right, so let's dive in and let's get started. So what I'm gonna do straight away is to delete this whole uh, section here and start from scratch. Okay, so I'll be bouncing between this screen and our design here so you can see exactly what is going on. And by the way, if you are not a member of DV University, go ahead and sign up. This is a community for DV users. Um, you can go in, ask questions and so on. And as you can see here, you know, there's a lot of discussions uh, happening in here. So be part of the community and uh, check it out. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start off with this uh, heading here, okay? So let's just grab a bit of text. So we're gonna come over here and just grab a bit of text like that. And, and then on our landing page here, we're gonna start by adding a new row. So we don't need a lot of columns here because we're going to be using a lot of Flexbox. So we're gonna go with equal columns. Now in this column, we're gonna add some text modules. So let's go ahead and add two text modules. So we're gonna just go in and duplicate this like that. So now we have two. But you notice that we have this massive gap here. That is because this by default is set to Flexbox. So let's come over here now to our row settings. We're gonna go into design. And as you can see, our layout here is set to Flexbox. So I just wanna change this to block because I don't want Flexbox to be applied. And then I'm just gonna set this to two. Now this is how things used to be before Flexbox. All right, so let's go back in here. And now we're going to go in and add our text here. And we also need a paragraph text, which is, okay, a few words, not too long. So we're, again, we're gonna grab this like that. And then we're gonna come over here to our page and then paste it in here. Okay, so what we need to worry about now is the sizes, okay? So let's go ahead and address that. I'm gonna click here on the main on the main one, which is the heading. Now, because we're using Sidecrafter framework, we're gonna come over here to advanced, CSS ID and classes, okay? And then we're gonna to go to our main class. All right, so over here, it is very important that uh, you understand why we're using certain classes and why not. So what we're doing straight away, if we use SK, okay, that just brings our, um, our responsive, you know, our responsive text, but we don't wanna do that right now. This time we wanna add our custom headings. So we're gonna say SK heading, okay? And then we are going to specify the size. At the moment, for some reason, it's not showing on the dropdown, but uh, that'll be fixed in the, next, uh, in the next version. Okay, so if we do L, notice what happens, okay? It's slightly bigger, but I know I want it nice and big. So we're gonna go six, XL. So this is custom headings, okay? It's very important you understand that this is not SEO friendly, it's just for design purposes, you know, for your landing pages, since we're building a landing page. All right, so now that we have this, uh, the second thing we need here is, of course, to center it. So we're gonna say text dash and then center, okay? So you can see here, center is showing. I'm just gonna go down, hit enter, and now my text is centered. Okay, what else do we need to do here? Let's just take a look here. Okay, so it's not very bold and also the text is black. All right, so let's go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna say fonts and let's try font 600. Okay, that's a bit too bold. Okay, so maybe we could go with font 400. Okay, is the, are we close? Let's just double check. I think so, okay? So we're gonna go with font 400 and we're also going to say font because we're gonna add the color now. So we're gonna say font and this is gonna be grayscale. So I'm gonna say font gray and we're gonna go with, uh, let's say 700. I said font gray, it's supposed to be text gray. No wonder why it wasn't showing up, okay? So it's text gray 700 and here it is, boom. Okay, now you can see it's darker, okay, fantastic. 
Now let's go to the next uh, text, text here on the bottom. We're gonna select it like that. And the first thing we need to do is to make it slightly bigger. So we're gonna come over here to advanced. Right, so here we're going to say text XL. Okay, I think that's the size right there. And then next we're gonna say font, um, let's go font 300, let's see what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, I think we're close, but this is slightly bigger. So I'm gonna go with font L, font large, okay? And then I'm just gonna say text center. And that should center our text. There we go, okay? Text center, and then finally, we're gonna do a margin top, so it's empty. So um, should we go small? Yeah, maybe we're gonna go margin top small. Excellent. Now, the next item we need to add are the buttons, okay? So we're gonna click here on this plus button just under the row, okay? And this time we're gonna add, we're gonna add a group, okay? Of course, if you need to, we can add another row. I mean, both options work, but uh, in this case, I just chose a group so I can show you how to use groups as well. So I'm gonna say button, and here it is. I'm gonna add two buttons in here like that. So right away, we need to go in into our group settings and design layout. And again, by default, it's set to flex. So let's change that to, actually, you know what? We need flex because our buttons needs to be side by side. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Boom, so now you see our buttons now are side by side, but we want them next to each other, okay? And for some reason, these controls here don't work. So what we need to do now is to actually go into the button itself and align it. So we're gonna go into design, alignment, and we're gonna align it to the right. So now you can see they're now side by side. Finally, we need to add our margin top. So let's go ahead in the group, go to advanced, CSS ID and classes. So for our margin top, it's empty. And let's go small because I think that's what we did on the top one. So we can see here that's small, that's small. Now this spacing is very important uh, when it comes to design because it just makes your layout look, you know, aesthetically pleasing, all right? Okay, so now that we have this, the next thing we're gonna add is our image. So there's several ways we could do this. We can add another group or we can add another row. So either way works as well. So I'm just gonna go and add another group, okay? So with our group now, we're gonna add an image in it, like that, okay. So right away, I can see I need to add my image. So we're gonna go in and let's use this one right here, upload image. Now you can see our spacing here doesn't look right, okay? So we need to sort out our spacing. So we're gonna go uh, in our group, okay? And then we're gonna come over here to advanced, CSS ID and classes and the, what we need is MT. So remember, we used small, okay? So because the text and the buttons and everything, they're all like one group, the image is on its own. So we're gonna change the size, okay? So we used small on the margins. This time we're gonna use medium, okay? Or we can even go large, okay? It doesn't really matter. I mean, it all works, okay? As long as visually we can see that this is separate from you know, the main text over here on the top. All right, so now that we have that, the next thing we need to do now is to, um, we need to work on those tiny buttons, okay? Again, we can go in and add a group. So let's go ahead and do that. So these are gonna go in as images. So we're gonna select our image there. And in this image now, we're gonna add these icons. So we're gonna start off with this one, upload image. And you can see here, it's right here on the bottom, okay? So we need a few of those. So we're gonna duplicate this a few times. Like that. I'm not sure if it's four or five. Okay, I duplicated the group here by mistake. So anyway, we have our icons here. So now we need to go back into the group, go into design, layout, and then we want our flex box to be row like that. So you can see now things are looking really, really good. Okay, so we can add space between in here if we need to, uh, which is okay. And now that we have this group here, I'm also going to add 
you know, padding, I mean a margin top. So we're gonna come over here, ID and classes, and remember, it's MT for margin top, okay? So for this, I'm gonna go small because that's how I've been spacing things. So the image here is related to my little icons here. So we're gonna use that, okay? So our page is now, you know, coming together, really, really nice. So let's go in now and replace all these images. So we're gonna go in and let's go with NCR, upload image. And then this one here is going to be Disney, upload image. This one here is going to be, what's the other one? Dropbox, okay, there we go. So we have all our images. I just need to go back in one more time and make sure everything is aligned correctly. So we're gonna go into layout and we are going to center everything here. I know I can't see if everything is really centered, but anyway, this is the option for centering items, okay? Now let's go ahead and save and let's do a quick preview. Now, what is important now is to make sure that our design is fully responsive, okay? What you'll find is when you uh, design um, layouts, amateurs usually go in and start adding all the uh, sizing over here, okay? Like for example, if they add, let's say the text in here, they would go in to the design mode and say, oh, okay, you know what? We need to go into the tablet and then we need to fix the size in the in the heading text. And then when it's small, we need to fix. Now you see with our design, you can see everything is fluid. We don't need to go in and mess around with these three tabs. We don't need to go there because our framework has fluid text. Everything works, okay, out of the box. And this is what makes using Sitecrafter Pro fantastic when it comes to designing websites fast. So now let's go ahead and inspect this. Okay, so in our inspector now, I can easily just start making things smaller because I really wanna see how things look. Now, do you see the heading there? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and everything just changes, you know, into the right position as you're making things small. Do you see that? Even my little icons here are looking great. So that means that our website is going to look fantastic on mobile devices. So around 480 is our screen for our mobile devices. So round about there, okay? So you can see there, it looks really, really nice. And this is why it's really powerful to use a framework. Otherwise, this, hero section on its own. I mean, you could spend close to an hour easily by trying to tweak things and trying to get all your variables in place and all that kind of stuff. But out of the box, we can have a design that looks really nice, which is responsive and fluid out of the box. Anyway, let me know what you think about the tutorial. Uh, I'd rather, you know, we start off with uh, something, you know, basic and our future tutorials are going to have, you know, something even more exciting and more, uh, yeah, a bit more challenging to do. So at least you can learn how to use the framework and also how to use Divi 5. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And by the way, if you want to support me, you can uh, go to diviuniversity.com. And uh, on the top right there, you can buy me a coffee. I would really appreciate that, you know, if you find... Uh, you need to uh, support me in any way. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.